Hey you guys, this is Josh with Homesteading Family and today I'm going to show you how I do an instant garden, how to get a small garden going in a yeah, relatively small space but without a lot of resources, some of the stuff you probably have on hand and you can get some vegetables going really quick. If you live in a small space, uh, even if you only have say four foot by four foot or three foot by three foot, you can actually grow uh, a lot of veggies, a good amount for that space. Um, if you've never gardened before, this is a great way to get your hands dirty into the soil and get started. If you're looking to just fill in some extra spaces around the garden you already have and grow some extra vegetables, this is a great method. You can also use this method to prep some ground for future gardens, even if you're not going to grow anything um, right away. So um, let's get into it. Okay, so the reason we're doing an instant garden right here is because we filled our main crop up and we need another place for some quick picking vegetables, mostly our salads and our greens. We eat a lot of greens. Um, one, because we like a lot of raw vegetables. Two, they grow fast. And three, you can actually grow a lot in a very small space. So it's a super great way to grow a lot of healthy vegetables in a small space and relatively quickly. And if you've been following us at all, you know that last year we prepped all this space for Carolyn's Cottage Kitchen Garden. And we used a method similar to what I'm going to show you here, um, but this is going to go a little faster. This was all sod last year, and at this time last year we had just barely transplanted all of these perennials, and so they were tiny. You can see what the difference a year makes of these. Almost everything you see here, except for a few uh, cabbages and broccolis and peppers, that she's got sprinkled in here is coming back on its own. And uh, it's way ahead of our vegetable garden. So we love the perennials, but we need to get uh, a little bit of fresh veggies a little closer to the kitchen. So we are gonna take this little space right here, just this side of her garden. Uh, eventually this is gonna be a wood fence and there'll be a gate here. And so Carolyn wanted a little space that she could come out and just have some salad pickings really easily. And we wanna get it going really quick. So. This is a no-till method. Um, you could till the soil up, but we wanna show you how to do this just really easy, really quick, so we're not gonna till anything. And the first thing we've gotta do is cut the grass down and get it close to the ground. Okay, so we've weed whacked our area, we've knocked the grass down. You wanna knock it down as close to the ground as you can possibly, but here's the deal. You don't wanna get rid of the grass. You want all those clippings underneath here. So we're just gonna rake them in, make sure that we've got them in here. That adds some good organic material and a little bit of nitrogen, nice green grass. Spread it out, kinda of even. Okay, now, however you're shaping your beds, you don't wanna to have to reach more than 24 to 30 inches at the max. Um, if you got to it from all sides, then you can do it about four foot wide and you still get to the middle, maybe a little bit wider, but not much more than that. Because we're against a fence, I don't want this bed to be any larger than 30 inches, right about in here. Matter of fact, we will just Break that into about that size so we can see. Let's get all our materials lined up in there. Alrighty, so next we wanna amend our soil. We wanna get 
more organic material down here and we want to get some nitrogen down here. The grass is doing that. Another good one that you can use is your food waste from the house. This is great to put in this spot to give all the biology, all the little critters, something to eat. You're trying to feed the soil here to get this going. So hopefully you're not throwing away your food scraps, right? And of course, we don't want any stickers like that, so we'll toss that one out. Don't throw away your food scraps. Try to take any of that out. All right, I'm gonna leave a little space for the walkway right here because eventually there's gonna be a gate. So we're not gonna make our bed in this part. We're just gonna let the grass come back. So you might, depending on the size of your family, save up for a day or two. You could layer this inch or two thick if you wanted to. Don't worry about it not being all composted or broken down. Some of you might not want bones in there. I see we've got a few bones. We'll save those for the dog. Everybody's got food waste, so I know you can do this. Maybe you have to save it up for a few weeks to get enough, but if all you had was the grass clippings and this, that's a great start. That'll help you out. If you can get a hold of some other organic material, that's great too. Here, I've got coffee grounds, and we've got a lot of coffee drinkers in our house, and we grind our own, so we've got that resource. If you don't have that, no problem, but you could go to a coffee shop. A lot of them just throw it away, and so you could ask them for coffee grounds, but this adds some great nitrogen to your soil. Um, try to keep it organic though. We only use organic beans. I personally would not want non-organic coffee grounds in my garden soil. They use a lot of chemicals in the production of coffee. Some of you might be looking at the eggshells in here and thinking, well, those aren't gonna really break down. And yeah, you're right, it actually take them a pretty long time. So if you wanted to dry those out and powder them up or something and help the process out a little bit, you could sure do that. And that would help, but, um, but nature will do its job over time. Okay, so, so far, we've got a great start here and building up some organic material and we haven't even had to buy anything specifically except for what we're already using. Now, I also have, we've got animals on the farm. So, doesn't hurt us to put in a little bit of manure and uh, got a hole right there or something. So we're gonna just sprinkle in a little bit of our barn waste. That's gonna add some more nitrogen. And a little more organic matter. If you've got chickens, you can use your chicken manure. Horse manure is okay. Not as good as chicken manure or cow manure or goats or rabbits are really great. So you may not have any of this. If you don't, that's okay. But if you can find a neighbor or somebody local, that's gonna be a great addition to the material in here. Let's see. Okay, so we've got a nice base of organic material and uh, nitrogen rich material and that is really going to get the decomposition process going down here at your native soil level and bring in all that soil biology all of the worms and bacteria and fungal communities that you want in good healthy soil this is just help speeding that process up and they will actually loosen up your soil um, 
as they come into here down below. So it's just a great soil conditioner. Next, you want to water it. Um, you're not, you might have a hard time getting water down here. So before we cover this up, we want to give it a good watering and then we're going to get to placing cardboard. We're going to give this a real good soak. Really want to get it good and watered and soaked in down here. The drier you are, the more draining your soil is, the more wet I would want to get this to really just make sure that it, it uh, gets it kicked on and going. And yeah, some of you are probably going to ask me about that electrical cord. That's a temporary solution, it's an exterior cord running to our electric fence for some temporary pasture. Okay, so I'm done water and I've really, really soaked it. It's really good to get a lot of water in here. Again, the drier you are, the more you want. I'm gonna just smooth it out a little. Uh, I want as little air pockets in here as possible because we're gonna cover this in cardboard. So just trying to smooth it over, not looking for it to be perfect, but as flat as I can get it. Right. Next is the cardboard. Now, if you can soak this first, it's a lot better. This is a little damp, but it's what we've got to work with. And I've gotten it a little wet, and we're going to wet it down some more. If you've got a barrel or something you can soak it in, uh, that's really helpful because we're going to want to get this really wet. And you want non-glossy cardboard and you don't want any plastic in it and we can put it down pretty thick tape measure we want to come out a little further than that Get our walkway. Fold this a little bit, get it out of the way. You can also just cut it. Let them right here, and I don't have a knife. So I'm just going to fold it. Get it to about the right size. Okay, that's one layer. I'm gonna do two layers of these, but I'm gonna get them really wet in between. Somebody missed a little plastic. Don't want that plastic in there. Okay, so the cardboard's gonna act as a nice layer to make sure that grass doesn't come back through. It's also gonna be some extra carbon and uh, material for all of your worms and uh, good buggies that we like in there. And I, I just wanna get this good and wet. Like I said, if you can soak it in something, that's great. That's a better way to go. But just get it as wet as you can. I'm going to do two layers here. I want this nice and thick in this area and make sure I overlap everything real well. Okay, so I've got two thick layers of cardboard on. I want to make sure all the seams are overlapped. And this is really going to suppress any growth. And this cardboard's all just going to break down and add some carbon to the soil. And, but I want to soak it again. I want this cardboard as wet as it can be. And again, the drier the environment you're in, um, you really want to get this wet because, you know, you're going to need to keep watering, but it'll be hard after you get your topsoil and mulch on here to get it really saturated. Now, if you were going to be doing 
prepping and not doing an instant garden, but just prepping a no-till bed, this is great right here. You wouldn't necessarily need to water this. You could just put this cardboard down over all your material, overlap the seams, and put down a heavy mulch, like six, eight to inches, and let this sit for six months through the weather, and you would have a great no-till bed ready for you. And so a lot of people will do this in the fall with just this and the mulch and let it sit all through winter and then in the spring they've got a bed ready to go. Now we're wanting, obviously for this video, an instant garden. So we're gonna do a little different approach and hence adding a lot of water in here. Really charging the system. And even got a hose you can even get underneath. Okay, so to segue just a little bit, this is a great way, you can do this in a large scale if you wanna do a long-term garden where you wanna convert a lot of sod like we did here in the cottage garden, or you wanna prep a no-till garden of any size, you can do exactly what we're doing here and then just mulch it. And that, that whole natural system's gonna work for you and you'll have a ready garden, but it's gonna take months to get this all broken down and prepped. And we don't wanna wait that long. We wanna get some veggies going now. So what we're gonna do is cover this in several inches of topsoil. This is the one thing that you may need to buy. So far, we've used everything, resources that we've had on the property. Um, we do a lot of gardening, so we've always got some topsoil around. You may have to buy a little bit of that, and that's okay. We're growing salad greens in this. So I'm gonna put about three inches, three to four inches of topsoil here. That's gonna give those seeds something to get started in and grow in. Um, if you wanted to plant garden starts, like plants, you could go ahead and mulch this and then just poke a hole uh, in the cardboard and plant your starts and add a little bit of soil around it because you got a lot of nitrogen in there, you got a lot of nitrogen rich material. So if you're gonna do that, you definitely uh, wanna make a nice hole and add some topsoil and compost to it. But again, we're trying to grow fresh greens beds here where we can grow as much food and po as possible in this little space. I'd like a nice flat bed. I'm just gonna smooth it out. It's a little wet because I soaked it real good, so might have to give it a little more time. Now, if you've got clay soil, your soil is gonna hold water. Our soil drains pretty well, so that's. One of the reasons I want everything so well soaked. If you have a heavy clay, you're down low, you're gonna hold some soil well, or you're gonna hold water well. This is pretty rich topsoil. Place I bought it from adds some compost to it, so this is good stuff. You don't have to have this, you can just have some good topsoil and then add compost to the top, which we're gonna do here in a minute. But just get the best you can.
Yeah, we're just about getting there. We've got nice, even, flat beds. I'm gonna check it. It's nice and moist there. I see I've got a little dry, a few dry spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and water it one more time. I'd really like this all nice and damp, all the way down to the cardboard. Don't want it muddy, but I do want it damp. And this is well-draining soil, so we're gonna just make sure we cover the dry spots so this doesn't dry out real quickly on us. We're getting into June and it's gonna heat up. It's gonna start getting warm. And you know when your water sits on top like that that you're, you're, it's got as much as it can hold. And I don't want it to start running off a whole lot. Okay. All right, now you don't have to do this next step. You've got some soil and you could go right to the planting stage in this, but the more nutrition, the more input you can add to your soil, the better you're gonna do. So we're gonna top this with some compost, good quality compost. And if you've got really depleted soil or it's just real basic topsoil, you can put a couple of inches of this. I'm just gonna put about a half inch down. It'll go under our seed bed. Yeah, just really gonna help charge the soil. Matter of fact. Hey Rachel, you interested in helping? I could use a bucket of sifted compost. Five gallon bucket. Yep. Take the, not the food bucket, but the other one. Can you keep an eye on the dude? I will try. He's probably gonna follow you. Or maybe he's gonna get in our video. Hang out with us. Sure. All right. A little bit of compost. I'm gonna smooth that out. I like to use the back end of the rake. Just helps make everything nice and even and flat. Hey, we've got us an instant garden bed. This is great. I'm gonna add a little more water and then we're gonna be ready to plant seeds. All right, so our beds are all ready to plant. We are planting some cut all leafy greens in here and I wanna um, prep for the seeds. And what I like to do to get as much out of this as I can is I'm gonna plant kind of microgreen fashion, very, very close together, about one inches apart. And as they grow up, we thin them and then let them grow out a little more and thin them a little more. And it actually allows us to have a continual harvest over time. Now. A great way to just make your rows so they're nice and straight and the seeds get in the right place is a dowel or sometimes just a round tool like this that you can press into the soil. You can see this is making a nice little trough for the seeds. 
These little troughs, because they're compressed a little bit, they hold water just a little better. And we've got a visitor. Hey, Ron, what you doing? Hello, buddy. So this is our little kitchen raised goose. We hatched him in the kitchen. And he actually, unfortunately, thinks he's human. The mama abandoned the nest, and so we tried to hatch him out, and we got one. And uh, he won't go back with the geese. So I guess he's going to help us garden. right now yeah now you can't be eating my seeds when I put them in here I think I was saying that these troughs because the soil is a little compressed are gonna help hold water and they're gonna help keep these seeds moist while they're germinating because we don't want to cover them a whole lot we don't want to put much soil on them eighth to a quarter inch at the most of soil after we put the seeds in. Okay, so we're planting lettuce in here. You could do chard, spinach, kale, any kind of leafy greens, but this is gonna be our summer lettuce, so We've got a couple tried and true lettuces for us. This is a lettuce called Kalura from Adaptive Seeds, one of our favorite. And you're just gonna sprinkle them in the trough. We, we want to go fairly thick. Seeds are not expensive compared to what they grow. And you can see why we only wanna be, we only want the bed so deep, I can only reach so far. And because we are not letting these grow to full heads, we are cutting them as young lettuce. First microgreens, and then maybe when they're two to three inches, and then when they're about four to six. So I want a pretty dense bed of lettuce. We have got our seeds in the ground. I guess they came out more like an inch and a half or two inches, but that's just fine. That's a good spacing, anywhere from an inch to two. And um, now we just wanna lightly cover them. You can just use some of the same compost. I like to sift the compost. If you can see here, it's just a little lighter. Doesn't have as much of the big chunks in it. So this is real great for covering the seeds. And I know a lot of these seeds say to just barely dust them. I like to go an eighth to a quarter of an inch. I found I get much better germination like that. Just want to lightly cover them. Now, we're doing this, these beds, these instant garden beds with lettuce. Right here close to the kitchen where it's easy to get to. This is a cut-all lettuce. Carolyn will be able to come out, or somebody, and just once they get grown, cut them with scissors, and they don't even have to be washed. They're ready to eat. So it's just what we needed. But you could... You could plant, plant squash in these beds. You could plant beans. I suppose you could plant corn, but it's not a very big bed for corn. Um, thing you gotta know is they're only gonna do so well the first year though, because that cardboard is gonna take a while to break down. And, and your soil down below uh, at the base is still a bit compact, compacted. And so those deeper rooted crops well, you can grow something, and it's certainly worth a try. Um, they're only going to do so well because they're just not going to be able to reach out um, until the second year in a bed like this. Unless, like I said earlier, you want to do transplants and you want to poke through the cardboard and uh, add a little bit of this compost and soil down further. Then you could transplant in some tomatoes or peppers or whatever you want and get that going as well. Um, again, I, I favor this method. 
uh, getting it going the first year with this lettuce because I can just get a whole lot of good food out of it. This is about 32 square feet we did right here, like two four by four beds. And we'll get enough lettuce out of this for our large household once it gets going. We'll eat probably six to eight weeks of a salad a day, maybe a little more sometimes out of these beds. That's a lot of food. All right, lastly, we want to water. We've got this covered with a nice compost, about an eighth to a quarter inch. And we want to water, and you do, but you do not want to water these guys real heavy. You want a light water, and you want to soak it, but you do not want to make the soil run or pool. So we want to get it just to where the soil shiny. You can see it's starting to sit on the top. We'll do the other bed and then we'll come back and do it once. And when these beds get going, you really are going to have to hand water them uh, two to three times a day until they're sprouting, until their roots can shoot down so that they don't dry off. And if it's breezy, you might have to do a little bit more. That just comes with, with uh, light seeded plants like lettuces carrots, even the beets do a lot better while they're sprouting, just kind of mimicking those spring, spring rains, keeping the soil moist. Let's see if it got down. I'll check between my row. Yeah, it's a little dry in there. So for this first one, I'm going to water just a little more. If you are overhead watering and you're using a big rotational sprinkler, make sure not to put these in that spot. Those are such large water droplets that uh, they'll move your seed around and move your soil off your seed. And even a heavy water, like you definitely don't want to do that. Even that's a that's even a little heavy. That's why I like the mist is a little light. That one right there is just about right. All right, you guys, there is an instant garden. I've got less than three hours of work, including gathering all material all my materials, most of which came from the homestead here and we've got about 32 square feet that will provide six to eight weeks of salads for our family of 11 to 12 we always have in the house plus guests sometimes um, so you can imagine what that can do if you're just a family of two or even four and uh, you're probably somewhere in your yard that you can do this and it like i said at the beginning this is a great way to fill in another spot it's a great way to get your hands into the soil and start gardening. So I hope you've, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it helps and I will see you soon.